Hey, this is Brent with Lankins Motorsports, and uh, these are uh, Molnar rods for our Coyote uh, engine. These are uh, factory length, which is 5.933 inches. Uses a factory wrist pin diameter, uh, 0.866, and uh, factory uh, rod journal diameter. Whole lot stronger than than the factory rods, though, and uh, come with good fasteners and are lightweight. Um, if I sound like I'm slurring a little bit, it's because I just got back from the dentist and had some dental work done, so my left side of my mouth is completely numb and uh, be for some good times. But uh, here's the rods, and uh, I'm going to show you the pistons and the rings and, and some other goodies. And what we're going to do today is get everything weighed up and measured and uh, the machinist has the crank uh, to give that a good wash and polish and uh, once we get our, our, our weights of, of every component then we can give him a bob weight and he can balance that crank for us. Here are the pistons. These are diamond pistons with uh, a coating on the skirts and they are a dome. They are a 7cc dome and with our, uh, I got some new SI valves in for, for the Coyote heads, so I'll have to re-CC the chambers, but I'm thinking we're going to be at around 12 to 1 compression. I actually bought these. These are shelf pistons, um, and then I sent them back to have the vertical gas ports put in because we are going to uh, be using an external uh, wet sump pump, but it does have a scavenge section on it so we will we can pull a little bit of vacuum which will help us make some horsepower so um i'm gonna get all these washed up and uh, we'll get to measuring and weighing so we also have um wrist pins are made by trend that's a good thing with diamond uh, they use good uh, quality um, name brand parts uh, with their with their pistons and everything um, I did forget to say that the pistons are are marked if you notice um, These reliefs are are bigger than these reliefs. So intake side exhaust side The dot shows you which direction uh, faces forward. So um, on this side The dot is on this side or on these pistons. The dot is on that side um We've also got uh, some some total seal pistons, or, sorry, total seal piston rings, and um, they are one two one five three millimeter. So I'll get these out of the box and weigh those as well. And what I do is just um, record uh, weigh the bearing. Uh, I got I measured or weighed all eight wrist pins, and I'll. Um, I'll average those because it's just like a tenth of a gram. Uh, we'll weigh our locks and then I'll go through and measure the diameter and the weight of all of our pistons and then use our uh, rod uh, scale fixture and measure um, the little end and the big, rip, big end of all the ro rods. All right, so what I've done is went through and, and basically weight matched everything. Everything is within four tenths of a gram of, of each other just by mixing and matching parts between the wrist pins and the rods and the pistons. So got my bob weight and sent that in to my balancer. And um, what I'm do, gonna do now in preparation for a uh, short block um, assembly, uh, don't have the cams yet so can't really do much until they get here, but um, what I will do is just pop two rods on two pistons. So number one and number six. Uh, number one and number six are companion cylinders, so they'll both be at top dead center at the same time. Um, this will also allow me to check piston to valve clearance uh, on, on both sides and uh, degree both sides uh, since since it's a four cam motor we'll have to degree all four cams and um, that 
depends on having a piston and a rod and a cylinder or I can measure true top dead center. So we're gonna do at least numbers one and six. And um, I don't wanna hang all the other pistons on the rods just in the event that we have um, a valve uh, pocket issue or a piston of valve issue or something like that. So uh, we'll just be cautious at this point. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get that done. Uh, just basically um, two, two rods, two pistons and some locks and some wrist pins. All right, so here's our one and six rods assembled. Just a, uh, this, this is basically a bulletproof combination. Um, I wouldn't care to put, uh, you know, a thousand horsepower through through that setup right there. So um, got that done, we'll set those aside. I'm gonna show you the new valves that we got for the heads. Here are the factory valves for our Coyote engine. Um, they do have a, a small back cut and a triple groove locks. Um, just kind of rough factory looking parts, you know what I mean? So if we look at the intake valve, 53.8. Here is our new SI valve, fully machine valve, small back cut. So a little bit heavier. I would imagine it's due to this material that's added at the bottom here for strength. Take a look at the factory exhaust valve, 43.6. Here's our new SI stainless exhaust valve. So again, a little bit heavier. Um, sometimes uh, it's best to uh, add a little bit of weight and gain a little bit of strength. And you see that um, you see that rule of thumb in things like wrist pins and, and that sort of thing. So everybody tends to try to get everything as light as they can. What you really want to do is to be aiming for strength and rigidity. So strength and rigidity and rigidity in the valve train will equal more horsepower. So, um, here's the differences in the shapes of the heads. So what I'm going to do now is CC a head and compare it to uh, the volume that I got with the factory valves. All right, here's a shot of uh, the combustion chamber with um, with the new valves. Uh, what I did was uh, put some lapping compound on there, and we're going to check the pattern that it made on our on our seat just getting a very narrow contact on um i'll probably end up taking a closer look at this off camera let's look at the intake valve So we got a good, a good pattern on the intake valve. Looks really good. For some reason it's not really showing up on the exhaust. I'm gonna take a closer look at this. All right. So when I CC it, um, I got a little over 56 cc's uh, I don't trust it though and here's why it's because <laughs> something's not happy you can watch the fluid level go down as we speak it's coming out of intake port so that means our intake valves are, are leaking even after um, lap the valves and put some uh, grease and everything on it so um, what I did notice was the 
factory valves are a little bit bigger on the head diameter. That's why we weren't really getting a good pattern when I lapped it. Um, so I suspect that we'll have to do a valve job on the exhaust side um, and, and obviously the intake side both. So that'll be the next step. And uh, we're just uh, plugging along here and just making things as good as we can. So this is uh, the rendition of how to build a coyote uh, by an FE builder. <laughs> so we'll just get through it as we can. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna call it a, a day at this one and i um, going to have another video for you this weekend. Uh, we're doing some drivetrain stuff on our Weber FE and uh, you'll get to see all that go together so stay tuned for another video i uh, hope you guys are having a good week and uh thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and i'll talk to you soon